Mr Tony Benn, I understand you're quite uh, an advocate of freedom of speech. Uh, how did you feel about freedom of speech when you were my age, 14? Well, I learned everything by listening to people, and therefore I always wanted to listen, and still want to listen to what people say. And uh, it's all very well to have the right to speech, but the question is, w will anyone hear you? So that's the responsibility of the journalist, to report what they hear, uh, and so that other people can understand it. And I think it's a very good idea to have this corner, speaker's corner, here in Lincoln. And there were quite a crowd came to listen. I spoke for a few minutes, and then other people tripped in. And it uh, creates a sense of community. It's a really good idea. So uh, I understand you're quite against war, and I, uh, I also understand that you fought in World War II as an air pilot. How did that sit with you? Well, I trained as a pilot, but I didn't qualify until just before the war ended. My brother was a pilot and was killed. My father rejoined the Air Force when he was in his early 60s, and uh, uh, it, was a, it was a hideous war. My opposition to war comes from having lived in London during the Blitzkrieg when we were being bombed every night, and we used to go, or the family used to go, when the sirens went off, we'd go and into a hairdresser's saloon and the underground, very near where we were, and then come up in the morning. And the church I went to was bombed, 500 people killed near where I lived, saw London docks burning, saw the Nazi bombers coming over, and my hatred of war began then. My brother was killed, many of my schoolmates were killed. And uh, I think most people's opinions come out of their own experience. Something happens to you decides what you think about it, and that was certainly a big factor in making me against the war. And uh, on a lighter note, uh, I've heard that uh, when you were the head of the post office, you uh, made a stamp design uh, and the Queen's head wasn't on it. Uh, is that true? Well, what happened was when I was Postmaster General, I realised that postage stamps went all over the world and people s uh, saw them, and uh, wouldn't it be a good idea to have a better quality of stamp and then I called in a designer and he said, well, all we have is a head. So I said, well, come along with some designs that, uh, as you think best. And he produced a mass of brilliant designs of birds and houses and bridges and trees and all sorts of things about Britain. And uh, the uh, row centered on whether the Queen's head were on, but it wasn't really about that. It was about having decent designs. And now the postage stamps in Britain are really very, very good. Mr. Ben, your energy levels are quite like a teenager, so uh, how can you explain that? Well, I wouldn't quite say that. I'm 85 years old, and uh, I'm in old age now, and I do find if I haven't got anything to do, I tend to stay in bed all day. And so, uh, I don't know about you, but I imagine you're up and alert, uh, playing games or doing whatever you want to do. But one of the di disadvantages of being old is you don't have quite the same energy, but I'm, I'm just as committed as I was when I was young. So, uh, I understand you have quite a big family. You have 12 gran grandchildren? Ten. I have ten, ten. grandchildren, yes. Uh, do you think, that are they quite involved in politics? Do they support you? Do you think children in this society should have more of an interest? Well, they're all interested, because they're brought up in a political family, all interested in politics. My granddaughter stood as a candidate. She was only 17 when she was adopted as a candidate for uh, Worthing and, and West Sussex. And uh, my eldest, my second son is a member of parliament. So there's a, there's a political interest there, but they're not all involved in that. Uh, but uh, it's a very close family. Have you got a, f a big family yourself? No, I've only got two younger sisters myself. That's, I see. that's about it. No, but they, my grandchildren come and support me, and one of my sons comes and stays occasionally at home because my wife died 10 years ago and I live alone. And it's a bit lonely, so it's very nice to have such a big family around. Mr. Ben, you've had many career highlights. Can you just tell me your favorites? Well, it's a difficult question because I've seen so many things happen and they've made an impression on me. I'm in the war. I remember the outbreak of the Second World War, listening to the broadcast by the Prime Minister saying we were going to war and realizing what a tremendous decision it was. And I remember the end of the war. And I remember the election campaign, some of which we won and some of which we lost. But the important thing is to keep your eyes and ears open so what is happening around you, you notice. And if you're going to be a journalist, you will very quickly appreciate that your success will be whether you're always listening and always watching, and then you can reflect what most people feel. So th thanks a lot for this, and I hope tonight goes well. Good luck.